Howdy folks, Brian Cusco here at Triple B TV and now we've moved to the Pomona Reptile Super Show for interviews and today we've got Mr. Jay Summers who is a friend of the channel, has been on the channel before. Jay has experienced breeding many, many species and a long time doing it and he really wanted to put out a video on this platform um, talking about white tree frogs and giving people good information on white tree frogs of which he has a lot of experience breeding. So we're here to do that today. We watch the Triple B TV. Yeah, right, right there, perfect. Right You're there. like a professional, yeah. So I know the reason we wanted to do this, or the reason you want to do this, the reason I want to do this, is that there's not really very good information out about white tree frogs, and you have a lot of experience. So what, what is that fairly accurate? Fairly accurate, yeah. Well, so I'm just going to ask you, what is it about white tree frogs, and what's the, what's the information? And I, I don't really know what questions to ask you per se, but I, you have the information you want to share. Well, so Something that happened this year, um, I got a lot of questions from people that got white tree frogs, not from me. And it's really weird. And um, people have been keeping white tree frogs too cool and too wet. And a lot of people contacted me this year with whites that they got from other people with information that they got from other sources saying, hey, my frog has a bacterial problem or it's like it has discoloration, it's not doing well, this and that. And I said, well, how are you keeping it? Uh, 75 degrees, 80 degrees, you know, 60 to 70 percent humidity. I said, that's, that'll kill a white's tree frog. I mean, you can do that for a couple of months out of the year, but that's not how you keep white's tree frogs, you know? And they come from an area that's very uh, sparsely planted in Australia, at least, that's uh, really similar to like the chaparral habitat in Southern California, like inland San Diego. And so when you're keeping an animal that's 75 degrees and 60% humidity, like that's like a montane, almost subtropical type setup and that's not good long term so people are having a lot of trouble and i tell people hey i never spray white's tree frogs they're in a well ventilated cage at you know 85 to 90 degrees with a hot spot of up to 100 and like i don't measure humidity but it's very dry you just have a water dish with clean water and that's it and that's really how they should be maintained especially if they want to show good color and they want to be healthy that almost seems like like toad status yeah, so we're known for breeding like the waxy monkey frog, and people know that you keep those dry and, and hot, and I keep whites exactly the same way, identical, no difference. So, yeah. Okay. Well, how long have you been working with, with white tree frogs? How long have I been working with white tree frogs? 35 years. So. <laughs> so you don't think you need like a few more years of experience to put Maybe. information in? <laughs> I mean, you're always learning, you know, but yeah. I mean, 35 years. I mean, I've, I've personally probably produced well into the, I don't want to say I've produced a million, but a half a million, no problem. About how many um, eggs does a white's produce in a, in a it, clutch? It depends. it depends. I breed them small on purpose because uh, I don't like the look of like a gargantuan obese white's tree frog. Um, plus, as they get older, their, their fertility kind of goes down, whatever. But a healthy female white tree frog can lay 4,000 eggs in a clutch. Yeah, so I try have... to stick to like the 800 to 1,200 range because I, I'm focusing on specifically trying to uh, increase the quality, well, the, the grade and saturation of a specific morph that I really only work with that and I got rid of everything else. So I don't want to do large large clutches. I want to do small, smaller controlled clutches that I can uh, better observe and keep track of. So. Out of clutch of like a thousand eggs and then you, how many would you say make it to tadpole and then how many of those would you say percentage wise make it to adult? Well I don't know about adult once I sell them but from me breeding them to morphing to sellable uh, I mean 90 percent. Yeah. And what would you say like what's the I'm just curious the hatch rate on like egg to tadpole. It depends. You know, some clutches have a really high hatch rate and some have like a pretty low, you know. So, I mean, I usually get like 80% hatch. 
That's cool. So you said you mentioned some morphs there. Like what what morphs of white tree frogs so, are there? Like in? Sandfire is pretty much the originator of all the white tree frog morphs. I mean the plum, the honey blue eyed, blue eyed, snowflake, super snowflake, all that, right? And so, but I, when I took over running Sandfire, I got rid of everything except super snowflakes. That's the only frog I want to work with when within whites. Well, why is that? It's the one I like. I don't want to wholesale, I don't want to breed large numbers of cheap wholesale frogs. That's not what I'm about. You know, it doesn't interest me, and I, I, it's, it's something that would create a lot of boredom in my life. So I don't want to just breed animals like that for money. So that's why. And I like the super snowflake, and I want to work with that specific mutation or morph and kind of uh, like spend the rest of my life increasing and progressing with that. And so that's my that's my specific like personal lifetime goal is to create like the nicest super snowflakes that have ever been created ever, ever. So, and then I did produce a new mutation that I haven't shown the public, but I'll send you pictures so you can debut it on this episode. Cool. What was it called? I don't know yet. I'm thinking like leaning like pistachio or matcha, but it's like a weird hypo uh, white tree frog. It's really uh, dramatic. Okay, I'll be excited to see that. Yeah. Now, what else are you, well, within with the, the stuff we're talking about as far as how to care white tree frogs, is there anything more specific? So you mentioned some drier climate, some higher temperatures. The 100 degree thing definitely surprised me. Yeah. Um, Even hotter sometimes. Yeah. Even hotter. Yeah. Anything else in the care, like like enclosure setup, like size, and any other things you want to mention about the details of how to care for them? I mean, it's not, it's not that specific. I mean, whites are really easy to keep. And, uh, you know, they're really adaptable. And there's nothing wrong with keeping a white tree frog at 70 degrees or 75 degrees and 70% humidity. You just can't do that all year, you know? I mean, where they come from, especially in Australia, they have a dramatic fluctuation in temperatures, you know? Um, and so, I mean, I let whites get cold, but I don't let them get cold and wet. And they're only wet when I put them in a rain chamber to breathe. Like I, like I said, I never, ever spray white tree frog cages, ever. Like, never. Are they just really good at maintaining their own moisture in their skin without being in the water? That's, Correct, yeah. That's yeah. just kind of how they adapted. Yeah, so, and like, frog people that would know, uh, if they keep, like, Mexican dumpy frog, Mexican leaf frog, same thing, packing medusa, dacna color, that's a frog that you would also keep very similar to a white's, and, or a white similar to those. And people who keep those frogs would never keep those frogs at, like, people who are keeping white's, because they know it would kill them. And that's not, it's just not good for whites either. Would it be, would it be fair to say that tree frogs are kind of like that because, I mean, because they, they've climbed out, they're climbing up trees and they're kind of getting more into a, the adaptability of a toad being out of the water more? To a degree, yeah. You know, I mean, it's just not, even like a red-eyed tree frog, you couldn't keep like that all the time. It would kill those too, you know. You can't take a, 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 a climatic event that happens annually for two months and then keep an animal like that the, the, for the whole year the same way. They just don't, that's not how they live. Um, is there anything else about white tree frogs you want to talk about on this? I also personally know virtually nothing about white yeah. tree frogs, so I, I don't mean, really... I think, you know, I mean, I think arguably they're the best pet frog for people who want, like, an actual frog that's a pet. You know, I refer to them as, like, a Pac-Man frog with toe pads, but they eat more, they don't bite, they certainly won't draw blood like a Pac-Man frog would, you know. Um, I mean, it's just a really good pet frog. They have all the attributes that you would want. They can tolerate handling, you know. They're pretty good size. They're robust, hardy. Take take a little bit of rough handling from kids if that, that were the case, you know. Cool. They're definitely some cool looking frogs. I remember the first time I saw one at East Bay Vivarium, I was like, wow, that's yeah. a cool looking yeah, frog. Cool. And some of the big ones from Indonesia get like really big, like big, like the size of my hand. So. so do you work with different localities like that? or So Sandfire years and years ago had some Australian stuff, and most of the Super Snowflake it has Australian whites in it. Um, but I don't really do much with, like, crossing out stuff. I'm really – I don't add a lot of new animals to the collection in that way. So all the whites that I have, I don't I don't buy wild-caught stuff and bring it into the collection. Okay. So – at some point, I feel like I should come by the ranch and do some video out there. Yeah. I might actually let people see the the enclosures and uh, the facility, which I'm notorious for not showing to anyone ever. 
<laughs> I would consider it a high honor. <laughs> yeah, well, you'd be one of the few people I would allow. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. I appreciate that, man. Well, shoot, uh, if, is there anything else that you want to cover in this video about the uh, Weiss before we get out? Or? I mean, it's just general stuff that I would say about most things. You know, be careful what you read. Be careful what you hear. Be careful who you hear it from. You know, don't buy... Uh, you know, one thing that's happened a lot with a lot of these uh, snowflakes and with honeys and stuff like that is a lot of people are selling baby normals and calling them things that they are not so that they can sell them. And uh, I would just say if you're out there as a hobbyist and you want to buy something that's not a normal white tree frog, if you want to buy a honey, if you want to buy a honey blue eye, or you want to buy a super snowflake, don't buy an animal unless it's visual. Don't buy a baby that someone is calling a super snowflake because super snowflake babies, are they're born as super snowflakes. They don't come out of the water green with a couple of little white spots and then just explode into something that looks like a starry night. That's just not how it works. You know, I would say buy, get pictures of the exact frog you're buying and uh, make sure it looks like what you want it to look like without a promise that it's going to look like that eventually. So... Okay. That's that would good. be that would be my advice to the people looking for like uh, higher end white tree frogs, because uh, a baby blue eyed and a baby honey blue eyed look exactly the same. So how do you know the difference? You, you have, have to wait for them to get adults. I'll tell you this: nobody's really producing honey blue eyes, and I don't I don't produce honey blue eyes anymore, even though we originated that mutation, because they don't breed true. You have to produce like five thousand frogs to produce like hundred and fifty honey blue eyes, and I'm not going to do that. Why is that? It's not. It's, it's just the way it works. Like a, it's like a weird roll of the dice lottery thing, you know. Like uh, some of the uh, paradox animals, like paradox bearded and stuff like that. Where if you know the pair that produces them, that's great. You know, you can reproduce them. But you can't take two honey blue eyes and breed them together and get honey blue eyed babies. It doesn't work that way. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying it's that's not how it works. It's very possible that you have two animals that you do and they produce it, but it's also extremely possible that you could have 10 pairs of honey blue eyes and breed them only to honey blue eyes and never produce a honey blue eye. Interesting, so it, just, yeah. uh, it doesn't follow like Mendelian genetics at no, all? No, it's not like that, it's not a recessive thing, no. Nope. All right, cool Jay, well, I take, appreciate you taking some time sure. and for caring enough to want to spread this information around yeah, and yeah. Uh, always just being a wealth of knowledge at, at these shows. I know your experience is vast and uh, it's, it's lovely that you're willing to share it with folks and put it out there. Absolutely. What only benefits the hobby and residually benefits me, so good experiences for everyone. That's what we want. We don't I want did. to lose people. We don't want people to have bad experience and then leave the hobby. It's not good. Yeah. So, good stuff. I agree. I appreciate it, man. All right, brother. I thank you guys for tuning in to the show today. I hope that that information from Jay about the White Street Frogs was helpful and beneficial to all of you watching. And uh, as we do with all of our guests here on Triple B TV tonight, we will be doing a Zoom call. If you want to pick Jay's brain uh, over that call, then I would highly recommend tuning in to do so. The dude is, I mean, he's, he's been breeding, he's, he's been in for a while. And he's got a lot of experience and uh, just a wealth of information. So if we don't see you tonight, we'll be sad. But if not, then we'll see you next week right back here on Triple B TV. Y'all take care. Now I'm doing this. Do I have, can you sit on my shoulder? Can I sit on your shoulder? No, not you. It'd be weird. That. This. If this sits on your shoulder, then when I then I'll have to keep pulling you it off. Literally off. hold it like a microphone. I literally hold it like a microphone. Is it a microphone? What? Is it a microphone? Oh, We're, it is you're a gonna microphone. find out later. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so cool.